Hi everybody, myself Dr. R. Balamurugan from Trip, uh, EEE department. I am uh, working as an associate professor. I am going to discuss on the topic of uh, vector control of induction motor drive. The contents of uh, my discussion are scalar control, limitations, in the introduction about vector control or field oriented control and the DC drive analogy. The next one is principle of vector control. The last topic is comparison between scalar and vector control. So basically drives means uh, the speed control is a major concern. So we have to consider uh, by selecting the proper speed control. So for that we will in general we will go for scalar control for uh, many applications. But this type of scalar control will give uh, uh, not precise control because of uh, various reasons. But uh, due to the due to that we are going for vector control. This vector control will provide accurate speed control compared to the other scalar control. Let us be explore the scalar control. So here in scalar control magnitude uh, of that control variable is only uh, varied so that uh, variation in speed control is applied. So what is the main uh, issue in this scalar control means suppose if one parameter is varied other parameter will also get changed. So how uh, we can see here when voltage is voltage is varied to control the flux here torque is also varied. So due to this incurrent uh, coupling effect both the torque and flux flow functions are voltage and uh, current. So, so when one parameter is varied the other parameter is also uh, varied due to the coupling effect. So you, when this act uh, the speed control will not be accurate. So in order to cut uh, go with the precise speed control, we will uh, go with another type of control called as vector control. So next what is the main uh, problem which will be coming under this uh, scalar control means. So due to this incurrent coupling effect, it will provide a sluggish speed response and, and it can be easily prone to instability. So this is the major concern. And another thing is it can only provide open, uh, open low speed control. So it can be used for the applications like blowers, fans and pumps. So but what is the major advantage of this color control? So it can provide uh, simple implementation of speed control. So next we will see the vector control, why we are implementing the vector control. So it is uh, invented in the year of 1970. So what is the major uh, work done in this vector control means? Here you can see induction motor is controlled in terms of separately exited DC motor. Here the vector control is implemented uh, by following the speed control which is obtained in separately exited DC motor. So DC machine like perform, uh, performance is obtained in vector control. So it is also called as a decoupling, orthogonal or trans vector control. So another thing is here uh, decoupling um, effect is followed because when one parameter is varied other parameter will be kept constant and it will not be disturbed. So the speed control will be given as an accurate and precise. But in scala when uh, current is varied, voltage uh, that is torque is varied, flux is varied like that. When uh, voltage is varied, flux is varied. So in the terms torque is also varied in scalar control. Here one parameter is varied, the other parameter will be kept constant. So you can see here vector control we are implementing uh, this vector control in synchronous motor drive also and also we can implement in uh, all types of AC drives. So next what is the major uh, concern in this vector control? So the complex implementation of speed control because it needs a feedback uh, processing unit which should be uh, combined with the control block and you are in need of uh, a separate microcomputer and also DSP for this implementation. So this is the major drawback in this vector control. But major advantage when we consider means here uh, the speed control will be accurate and we can implement this type of speed control in uh, many industries like paper industry, textile industry where we are in need of close with speed control. So next we have to understand about the implementation of this vector control, how it is implemented in terms of uh, separately excited DC motor with respect to the induction motor. So here you can see this is the equivalence of a separately excited uh, DC motor. Here you can see the decoupled nature of armature and field current and also the phase diagram which is provided and next in the next to the, this diagram you can see the uh, another diagram which is for, for vector control induction motor drive. Here you can see the same structure which is followed for vector control with, uh, with the phase diagram. So here come to the separate exit DC motor you can see the armature 
which is not coupled with the field. So when I am wearing this armature, uh, flux that is torque or flux will be varied. So the other one field will not be disturbed. So torque will not be varied. Suppose if, if I am wearing the field component, torque component will not, will, will not be varied. When I am wearing this torque component, field component will not be varied. So same principle is used here in this vector control. So because why we are using this vector control for induction motor drive means so here uh, ABC quantities are converted into uh, that is uh, quadrilateral axis and direct axis component. Here why we are converting these as that is three phase quantities into two phase quantities means so in order to obtain the accurate precise speed control. Suppose if you are uh, doing this transformation we can have an accurate speed control by using this vector. So here we can see IDS, IQS which is analogous to IA and IF. So same phase diagram is followed here. You can see here uh, direct axis component is varied in order to control the rotor flux and the quadrilateral axis will be in perpendicular to the direct axis. The same thing is followed here. So here you can see uh, the field current is varied to have a variation in the field flux. So and also here armature flux will be perpendicular to that of the field flux. Same way armature current uh, will be perpendicular to that of the field current. So you can see that there will be a decoupled nature of armature current and field current. Same is followed here. If there is a decoupled nature of power axis axis current and direct axis current. So the main thing is here we have to make an alignment which should be proper with the direct axis and the rotor flux and which should be perpendicular to the quadrilateral axis. So when we are doing this alignment in uh, with direct axis and quadrilateral axis, we can have an accurate speed control. So only we are going for the transformation from three phase quantity to two phase quantity and also here decoupled na decoupling nature is followed. So if we are uh, going for this decoupling nature, induction motor will have an accurate speed control and compared to that of the other uh, types of speed control. Uh, for example, we can take scalar control. So here you see the you can see the torque equation of a DC uh, motor. Here you can see this is the a constant and uh, which is multiplication of armature current into field current. That is when uh, field current is varied, the torque will not be disturbed. And when field current is varied, armature current will not be disturbed. So torque component will be varied accordingly, but armature current will not be varied. So the same way the flux is also not disturbed. When field flux is varied, armature flux will not be disturbed. When armature current is varied, field flux will not be disturbed. You can see the same uh, analogy is followed in the induction motor. You can you can see the torque equation here, directional axis and quadrilateral axis. These two are the current components, control current components. This torque indicates the control currents. This current indicates the machine currents. IDS and uh, IPS is the quadrilateral axis and directional axis currents of the induction motor. Here induction motor, uh, we are controlling the inverter, there we, can, we will have a control over the induction motor. So we are supplying the controlled currents to the inver inverter, so that we will be having a controlled output for the induction motor. So next we are entering into the uh, vector control, uh, how we are implementing the vector control in the induction motor. So you can see this um, block diagram, which is showing some uh, transformations and also mentioning some control variable and machine parameters. So here what I am showing is this plot diagram uh, helps to give the um, two types of control that is uh, two types of equivalent block diagrams. One is for control structure, another one is for machine structure. Here I am omitting the in inverter. I am assuming that inverter is giving a um, uh, unity current gain. So I am uh, leaving that uh, for this explanation. So you consider the this control structure. So there is some transformation is done. Is that we call it a single transformation. And you can see the machine. That is induction machine. Here also there is transformation is done. So basically there are two types of transformation. So uh, what, what we are doing means for vector control we have to convert the three phase quantity into two phase quantity. You can see here IA, IB and IC are the machine currents which is nothing but three phase quantity. We are converted it into a stationary quantities. That is DQ DS and PS is nothing but stationary diaper axis and quadrilateral axis frames. So these two or uh, three these three parameters are converted to two parameters, three, three phase quantities converted to two phase quantities, and we are changing this stationary reference frame into rotating reference frames. DEQE is nothing but rotating reference frames. So you can see here 
this transformation is particularly done by using the cos theta e and sin theta e which is nothing but unit purpose which will helps to proceed this vector control based on this inputs only the quadrilateral axis uh, direct axis stationary reference frame is converted to uh, synchronous rotating reference frame so when these uh, unit vectors are uh, um, previously uh, modeled this transformation is also uh, correctly given and when this, this transformation is given we can have a proper alignment of diagonal axis with rotor flux and quadrilateral axis which is perpendicular to the diagonal axis so when this alignment is clear we can have a proper speed control or we can say it as an accurate or precise speed control so for that we have to go for this transformation so this is machine uh, machine transformation next we will go for the inverse transformation which is implemented in control structure so here these two are the control currents which is the diagonal axis current quadrilateral axis current which is converted into uh, converted from say, rotating reference frame to stationary reference frame by using the same unit vectors so the main work of this uh, vector control is generation of this unit vectors if this generation of this unit vectors is perfect the speed control will be a perfect speed control or we can have an accurate speed control according to our applications next we will see the comparison between the vector control and scalar so we all know vector control is a precise control scalar control is a conventional control there will be a there will not be an accurate speed control you can see here what are the control parameters current voltage and frequency here you are not controlling the magnitude and phase of the currents like that quadrilateral axis and direct axis currents we can have a steady state equivalent circuit model for this scalar control here we we can easily model for dynamics also and another one thing uh, in vector control we can have an instantaneous control uh, here we will uh, we will model for a steady state model and we will not uh, model for uh, transient conditions but this vector control will model for a dynamic conditions also here there will be a modeling for transient conditions also so that we can have a accurate speed next the implementation of this scalar control will be a simple one but here the implementation will be complex because it needs feedback processing units and signal processing uh, systems which you have to convert the transformations and we have which will lead to the speed control so next we can see what are the functions of this color control speed control voltage and frequency here which will also the same like the dc type here inherent coupling effect will be that the torque and flux will be uh, uh, coupled because one parameter is varied the other parameter also will get varied but the main advantage is that there will be decoupling in scalar vector control and this inter, uh, inherent coupling will give the sluggish response in speed control and also prone to instability in speed control but the advantages of decoupling effect will provide an accurate speed control and also steady the transient, transient conditions and also transient condition response and also a dynamic response will also be good in vector control so only we are go going for vector control comparing to the scalar control so the industries like uh, which need of close loop speed control will implement this type of vector control to have a accurate speed control so thank you